Let's start our exploration of the solar system with this most vital component, the sun. The sun is, by far, the brightest object in our sky and our greatest source of light and heat. People have recognized the power of the sun since the beginning of humanity. The sun was known in many cultures around the world as a deity or as a symbol of light and life. The Egyptians had Ra, the Japanese had Atamarasu, and the Aztecs called it Tonitua. In the Bible, it says that God created the sun as a great light to govern the day. We rely on the sun for our food, warmth, and energy. Plants use the power of sunlight to convert water and carbon dioxide into food and oxygen. The sun's warmth causes water to evaporate, creating clouds and rain. We generate electricity from solar energy. The sun is, by far, the most important thing in the sky to our lives here on Earth. But what is the sun? The sun is a star, a hot, fusion-powered, superheated ball of hydrogen and helium, 150 million kilometers away from Earth at the center of the solar system. The sun is the biggest, most massive thing in the solar system. It's almost 1.4 million kilometers, or 860,000 miles wide. It is over a million times the volume of the Earth, and 300,000 times more massive. The sun's massive gravitational pull is what keeps all the planets, asteroids, and comets in orbit. Without the sun's gravity, there'd be nothing to keep them from flying off into space. Without the sun, our solar system couldn't even exist. Scientists call our sun a yellow dwarf star. Yellow because it emits the most light in the yellow-green part of the spectrum. And dwarf because even though it's much larger and brighter than a common red dwarf star, it's still pretty small as far as stars go. All stars are powered by the same basic principle, fusion. Deep down at the center of the sun's core, the pressure is so strong that atoms of hydrogen are literally fused together to form helium. This fusion releases energy. Trillions of these fusions occur every second and create the light and heat that we feel even millions of kilometers away. The center of the sun is estimated to be over 15 million degrees Celsius. This energy flows from the sun's core through the churning convection zone to the surface where it is released as light. Compared to the core, the surface of the sun is much cooler at only about 5,500 degrees Celsius. This area is called the photosphere and it's where the light is emitted. It's the brightest part of the sun that we can see here from Earth. The photosphere is made of bubbles of plasma heated by the fusion power below rising and sinking like a pot of boiling water, or a lava lamp. These bubbles, or granules, are each about a thousand kilometers across. Just above the surface of the sun, in a layer called the chromosphere, are thousands of jets of hot gas. These jets each only last about a few minutes, but can be hundreds of kilometers tall. The outermost part of the sun's atmosphere is the corona a layer of hot ionized gas that extends millions of kilometers into space. The corona is actually millions of degrees hotter than the surface of the sun. Scientists aren't actually sure why this is, though it may have something to do with solar flares. These charged particles also create the solar wind, which flies from the sun into space at speeds over 750 kilometers per second.
The most notable features on the surface of the sun are slightly darker areas called sunspots. These spots are cooler and dimmer than the surrounding areas, but are still over 2000 degrees Celsius. Though they appear small compared to the rest of the sun, they can be over twice the size of Earth. Sunspots are caused by the sun's rotating magnetic fields. These fields extend out of the sun, creating sunspots with positive and negative charges. Sometimes, these magnetic fields can become twisted and release a massive amount of energy called a solar flare. A single flare is more powerful than a billion nuclear bombs. In some cases, solar flares can even fling huge waves of plasma far out into space, called coronal mass ejections. These explosions release tons of radiation and charged particles that can damage satellites and even cause blackouts here on Earth. Luckily, the Earth's magnetic fields protect us from most of these charged particles, but some of them collide with our atmosphere at the North and South Poles, creating auroras. The Sun actually goes through a cycle of activity about every 11 years. During a period of low activity, called the solar minimum, the Sun is much less active and there will be very few sunspots or flares. But during the solar maximum, the Sun is far more active. The surface is covered with sunspots and solar flares are very common. Despite the sun's violent nature, we could not even exist without it. Not only does it give us light, heat, and warmth necessary for life here on Earth, but the sun's gravity keeps the planets from flying off into space. Even though it's millions of kilometers away, we still feel its power every day. The sun is by far the most important part of our solar system but is only the first stop on the journey.